As we mentioned in the last video, this is our calibration run. We need to get the x-axis into time, which will be the time between the pulse pairs on the oscilloscope. So what you'll have to do then as I get this going is you'll have to determine how much time is between the pulses on the oscilloscope and what bin seems to get stimulated in PHA mode when I run that. So I've got this pulse, this initial pulse over here, pretty well centered on this vertical line. So you can think of that as your t is equal to zero. Now I'll just run it and let's see what we get. So I'll hit go on the computer up here, the uh, green traffic light. So off we go. So you can tell our first pulse pair right here, which is approximately two, four microseconds. So two divisions, maybe like 2.2 divisions times two microseconds per division, something like maybe 4.4 microseconds, is falling in this channel right here, which looks to be about channel 110. Okay, and what you'd expect now is that I start to change the difference between the pulse, the time difference between the two pulses, watch these two pulses here, you'll expect a different histogram to get stimulated. So it looks like this channel over here, channel 45, corresponds to the time difference between these pulse pairs. And so I can sort of keep sweeping and I can go all the way over to here now, make the pulse pairs very far apart. something like this. And you can see now that this histogram bin is being stimulated on the computer screen. So that's channel way over to channel 202. And so that's the way the calibration will proceed. So I think what we'll do then is let's be a little more systematic about this. Let me move the time delay really close together like this. And I'll try to make some nice, easy to read pulse pairs on the oscilloscope. So I'll center that pulse right down there on this vertical line. So the negative going edge, which is used for timing, is centered right here on the edge of this first row of boxes here. And it'll be the time difference on the next one that'll be important. Remember, two microseconds per division. Maybe I'll turn the cursors on then and see if I can nail this down to help you get your numbers, because that's probably what you would do if you were in the lab. So there's cursor X1 right there. I will go to cursor X2 now. There's the next one. And so you can see, like for example, the two pulses coming in are 2.3 microseconds apart. And the channel that that's stimulating, let me just clear it so we can see up here. Looks like it's about channel 55. Okay, so what we'll do then, I think I'll pause this video yet again. And I'll start anew, and in the very next video then, we'll systematically go through five, six, seven pulse separations, see what channel it falls on, so you can get your calibration.